What's going on, Internet? I'm Christopher Peterson, and you're listening to the Nerd EXP Podcast. Today I'm here with Guillermo. I'm here. And Drew. Hello. And we're here to go through this week's top entertainment headlines and talk about Star Wars Rebels. The point of all this? To start a conversation and help you level up your nerd IQ. Kicking off with comic news... Uh, Marvel is bouncing around and kind of officially announced already that they are going to cancel their Fantastic Four comic in 2015. Comics get canceled all the time, but I mean, the way they're talking about this, this will not get picked up. This will not be a, a volume four that becomes a volume five. That They are going to stop publishing this property um, kind of because they don't want to keep feeding the Fantastic Four franchise of Fox is kind of the mentality in line, which... I don't really get because there's already 50 years of material and fandom and like creation. And Fantastic Four is not a stellar comic. It's not a number one seller if you look at the charts. It typically only has one comic a month as opposed to like Batman, which has eight, Wolverine, which has five, Superman. You know, so it's not a huge family, but it's always been a staple. So it is just kind of surprising that Marvel is backing away from this. That's, I mean, for a, from, from an outsider, I guess, because I have not read a comic in a little bit here. Uh, definitely that's one of the big big uh, characters that's a Stan Lee uh, creation characters so that, that's, that's pretty big for Marvel now uh, I mean we see this in comics all the time go away for a little bit and then later on they just bring him back just different and reboot and uh, I highly doubt that Marvel is doing it just to kind of remove material from uh, or for, for Fox at any point, I just feel that whatever mo- uh, money that Sony and Fox gave to Marvel, at any point, Marvel can just offer twice as much and just buy it back or just cancel a contract. I mean, it's their property. I think uh, as I understand the properties, uh, the way it was written was like, if they make a movie every X years, they keep it forever. So that's why you're going to see some X-Men movie or Spider-Man movie at the very least, because... The way those movies operate so far, and then like the, how much money they generate, that's unlimited money. Like even if they don't do great, they're probably always going to make their money back. Supposedly, there's a really low budget, terrible Fantastic Four movie from the early '90s or something that they made just to keep the rights. It never aired. That Fox yeah, made. Yeah. It, really? it is terrible. I've um, never seen anything from it. So. I'm trying to like even think to describe it, but it's like I've a seen, lot. Of, close-ups and, like, weird angles, and um, they look like, it, you know, kind of like how the X-Men movies were like, hey, let's take them out of the, the colorful costumes because it's not realistic. Right. This was like, let's put them in the colorful costumes because that's what they wear. So it just did not work with, like, the, the technology of that time. I think you can bootleg it, so. Huh. Might be the only way. Dang. That's crazy. Uh, definitely uh, significant for comic book readers to Maybe. not one character just say it's dead. Maybe they'll uh, turn them into mutants. They'll show up again in X Men. <laughs> <laughs> that way, they can continue the X Men cinematic universe with Fantastic Four. It's possible. Uh, Marvel, like trying to like do some backyard baseball, was um, had the Inhumans, which are kind of a Fantastic Four property, which they still own the rights to populate the Earth just like mutants. So that way, maybe they can start to try and create properties that they would then own that had mutants semi-attached to it or that, that mentality. It didn't work. I mean, like, we've talked about this before. People, for the most part, like what already exists. New stuff is not going to catch on. Right. Uh, kind of along those lines, uh, Marvel is throwing in a new comic series called Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Um, Squirrel Girl is from the Great Lake Avengers. Uh, <laughs> the in Great the- Lake <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> Uh, it, I mean, it's Kevin probably, Smith involved in this. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, they're they're supposed to be a joke. Like it's supposed to be a joke on and of itself. One of their guys, like audience. One of their guys is um, uh, his, like his power is that he's immortal, but he's just like you and I. Just he's immortal, so like he'll go in these fights and just die constantly. <laughs> it doesn't do anything, and he kind of wants to die. But um, Actually sounds pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what they're going for. They're going for silver age crazy zaniness. Um, 
you know, it, it's just funny because it's in such contrast to so much of what the rest of the line is going that they are willing to, like, make this huge left turn. So. Kevin Smith could direct that movie. That's right. <laughs> finally get his Marvel movie. movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, it'll be good for the Great North trilogy. <laughs> like, it's some recognition. That's good. That's, that's, that's significant. Uh, it's significant that, I guess, it's a new character is getting their old comic line, and that is a girl. I mean, again, we see that drift again to try to create new female lead characters. Marvel's making a big push for this. Uh, I don't. I, I'm probably. Gonna, I'm probably going to miss somebody. But they have um, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, Storm, Elektra, Thor. Uh, Thor. <laughs> yeah, did, anyone, did you read Thor? The, the, the it hasn't a. Yeah. Yeah. It did. It did. <laughs> did, it did. Blah, 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 blah. But that's exactly it. Yeah. It, that's exactly it. It got released. No one's talking about it. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, the, the concept and idea of it are much more important to the community than the execution. Like, I saw websites, um, like video game websites or movie websites, talking about female Thor. I'm like, you didn't review last week's Deadpool or, you know, the crazy twist in Batman. But, you know, mm-hmm. because it was, um, um, I'm saying trying to get right, a civil rights issue. That's, that's not accurate. But, like, an equality issue. That's how it came and picked up so much media buzz. And we saw it in places that doesn't not typically report along those lines. It was significant, I guess. But, yeah, insignificant enough to cover it. Uh, kind of randomly off docket. Um, I'm going to throw this out there for you guys and just kind of get your opinion. Batman. I hate it. Bat- <laughs> I'll wait. Batman the comic cost $4.99 a month. Okay. The writer and artist went on Twitter saying, Hey guys, we talked to DC and we're encouraging, we're urging them to drop the price back to three ninety nine. dollars okay. That's it. Like, what, like, is that, do you feel like that's good fan service and these guys, like, have your back? Or. I don't know. If I'm, I don't think whether if I want, I'm going to a store and buy a comic. I don't think a difference between three ninety nine and four ninety nine to a newcomer it's really going to make much of a difference. Uh, for somebody, I guess that has a bunch of comics and is always used to paying three ninety nine for the same weekly budget, I, I'm sure they can say, "Yeah, man, get get it back to three ninety nine." Um, yeah, I, I mean, if I if it's something I like, I think for a dollar difference, I wouldn't make a. A difference to me. Double D. That's you. No, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're just trying to, I don't know, stir the pot. And it's kind of a ballsy move because I don't really, I don't know what kind of contract they would have, if any, but that's something they could be. <laughs> we'll lower a dollar, but we'll also lower your, uh, <laughs> your wages for about 100000 a year. Yeah, I'm- I mean... I mean, I guess that's the way, like, like when I saw this come out, um, and, you know, and I, I guess, like, a part of me is glad, and, you know, it's like, hey, you know, thanks for trying to have your fans back. But as part of me, it's also like, you're kind of just self-serving and patting yourself on the back. Hey, guys, I asked this company that I work for to lower their prices, which doesn't impact my bottom line whatsoever, and I don't know what they're going in and on and about, but I do because I'm one of you. I'm a fan, just like you. <laughs> but he doesn't really have any skin in the game. Right. Like, you know, maybe one thing if, you know, if I was told that he made 10% commissions on every comic that was sold, and he still asked them to lower the price. Right. I mean, he's paid for a product, so, I don't know. It just seems like, it just, to me, it came across as kind of cheap um, fan service. Nothing happened. I mean, did they? No. Yeah, it, the comic books are still four ninety nine. <laughs> maybe they're going to be increased to five ninety nine now. Crickets from DC. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, moving on to game news. Uh, this little company that, that just tries its hardest, Nintendo, finally announced... Who? <laughs> <laughs> Smash Brothers U is confirmed for November 21st. That's right. Wow. I won't be buying it. What? <laughs> why not? Like, you're, you're a resident diehard Nintendo fan, so why like will this game not even speak to you? I've just... I've never gotten into Smash Brothers. Yeah. I don't... Um, I'm not really a fighting game person at all. I uh, don't. On top of that, I don't know if, if you had it planned on the docket or whatever, but I was reading today, like, Nintendo UK's website or something had the GameCube controller adapter listed as compatible with all Wii U games, and then Nintendo came out today and said that's not true, it's only Smash Brothers U. So that's kind of disappointing. Like, I, I almost would have been interested in getting at least that adapter, but. It's only for Smash Brothers U. It's 
I'm I'm not a diehard Smash fan, so I don't understand how the GameCube controller is the god given perfect controller yeah. for playing this game. But get over yourself, Smash fans. Like just play with the new controllers, play with the broke controller, like Controllers change as time goes on. You don't hear people complaining about, like, oh, man, I got to play Tony Hawk, but the DualShock 2 is a little bit further out. I wish there was an adapter so I can use the DualShock 1. But that's the perfect balance. I, I've never seen fan service kind of, like, uh, Nintendo Strange, fall through yeah. for that controller being there. What really bothered me about the whole thing was um, that uh, Nintendo downplayed the Wii U version Mm -hmm. to bring parity to the Nintendo DS. Uh, Like in the Wii version, um, if you play a Samus, you can change her moves to Zero Suit Samus. Or if you play this Pokemon trainer, you can oscillate characters. Or the Ice Climbers um, are are two characters kind of connected. Well, that's too much processing power for the 3DS. So Nintendo took it out of the 3DS version but they then retroactively took it out of the Wii U version, so that way that they're the same game, more or less. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. So, I mean, they've, like, gimped themselves. Maybe they'll uh, offer it as DLC. <laughs> Down yeah. the line, get some extra money. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, I, 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 played, I played the Smash Brothers. It's definitely interesting, like we talked about when, uh, I think, E3, when we did our little E3, was it an EP, E3 episode that we did? Our little E3, our mega stellar E3 episode. <laughs> that, that's right, <laughs> you know, that's one one there that we did. Uh, we talked about the characters and the introduction of the characters and how they made some big event about revealing a new character, uh, you know, a couple of weeks after that. From Fire Emblem. That's right, that <laughs> we were like, who the hell is this guy? Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's great. I, I think I, I would like to check it out. But, uh... Yeah, I'll definitely give it a shot. This uh, is not... That would not be the reason I'm buying a Wii U. I know someone who's who's going to buy it, and I'll play it at his house. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's enough out. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, one thing about the Smash Bros. U is that you can use these Amiibo figures. We've kind of talked about them oh, before. That's right. The first, game, first game to have Amiibo. Infinity this is going to be figures. it? Mm-hmm. Wow. They're releasing with it. I saw pictures, I think, again, it was Nintendo UK that had, or Nintendo Europe. Why do you hate America so much, Drew? Like, just, read American websites. The, yeah. the Europeans <laughs> announce things first, I guess. I don't know. Nintendo, they wake up Nintendo earlier. Nintendo likes them more. I don't know. Uh, but they had uh, the game packaged with Amiibo characters. It's like a bundle. Or, or one Amiibo. You get one Amiibo with it. So... So on, the docket, so on the docket, you have Second Wave. Yeah, they, so annou- they announced six uh, six more that were, were not previously announced to come out in December. Six more Amiibo figurines. Do you remember anybody? Luigi was one. <laughs> um, Luigi's not first wave material. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's, that's, that's terrible. terrible. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe, I'm like, I, can't, I couldn't believe he wasn't already announced. That was kind of weird. And uh, Captain Falcon was another one I remember. Um, I think Zelda... Link? Zelda or Link? Yeah. Link's on the Zelda. first wave. Zelda's, oh, okay. Zelda's on the second wave. Wow. No Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong, he's in one of them. <laughs> I, I remember seeing his figurine, but I don't remember which one. I mean, so is. who got snug? Um, Peach? Did Peach get a figure? Yeah, she's, she's in the first wave. wave. Toad? Mar- Mario and Peach. Toad, mm-hmm. I don't think, is on there yet. Toad got snubbed? Toad, Toad snubbed. I think I'm fucking on I think Yoshi, on Yoshi's one of the first wave, even. Yoshi beat Luigi. Bowser? <laughs> Uh, I'm sure he is. I don't, I don't recall, but I'm sure. Huh. Um, I'm excited just uh, just to see when they announce that they're going to be compatible with Mario Kart 8. Oh, the, <laughs> next, we're only one month away from their first DLC pack. There's, I'm, I'm excited. They're selling, they're selling separate DLC packs for Mario Kart 8. I, I'll be surprised if these Amiibo figures retroactively change the code. Cause it means no, they, they announced at E3 that Mario Kart 8 was going to be compatible with Amiibo. They just didn't say how or, or what it's going to do. Okay. So. I'll be surprised if you can use these figures in any meaningful way. Like, if you can use the villager amiibo to dr- drive a villager in Mario Kart 8 or any character that does not currently exist. I think it's an upgrade for existing characters. Because, I mean, that's how they're treating it with uh, Smash Brothers. I don't know exactly what their plans are for other games. but Pay to win. 
I guess another Nintendo. I'll just say right now, I've been kicking ass with my um, Mercedes SL300. <laughs> <on Mario Kart>. <laughs> <laughs> That's pre-release or post-release? <clears throat> didn't, right. didn't they have it like that? Is that the one that you got it was before? The free, the free DLC. Yeah. Oh, it was free? It was free. The Mercedes is free. I'm not paying for that. Oh, wow. I mean, if it were part of the larger Nintendo packs, then yeah, I would have paid for it, but I wouldn't have paid solely for Mercedes. Oh. Or it came with the different colored Shy Guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been using different color Yoshis. So. Shy Guy sucks. <laughs> uh, I know this is a little bit older, but uh, uh, I've been kind of sick or on vacation, depending on who you ask. Um, <laughs> So Destiny came out, and this is Bungie's huge, epic follow-up sequel right. to Halo, um, Activision dollars behind it. It's going to be the game that we're going to play forever. Uh, just kind of quick review. It is the most fun I've had playing a mediocre game. Interesting. Uh, Explain. Like, shooting and killing things in that game is great. Everything else in that game is bad. Mm. Voice acting is bad. Story is bad. Environments are flat. Moving around. Let's menu start navigation. with this. What system were you playing it in? I'm playing on PS4. Okay. It, so that's only on PS4, right? Uh, it's PS4, right Xbox One, and then uh, PS3, Xbox 360. No, oh, PC, wow. no PC. Wow. No PC. But what's crazy is... And this is like, Halo wasn't on PC, was it? It made Later. its way there. Eventually. Okay. You use um, a, a circle... To navigate menus constantly, so you use a joystick like you would a mouse to like move and select like your armor and where to go and items and loading uh-huh. instead of a D pad. So it just feels like it was built for On a computer. <laughs> for the computer, but it you know wasn't. So it loses kind of that console quick controls. Um, loading screens are terrible. Like you have to go to this hub world to buy equipment, and yet it takes like almost like a solid minute and a half to load. And then it takes like 30 seconds to load back to the menu to select where to go. And then it takes like a minute and a half to load your mission. So, um, I don't want to hear any more crap about the Wii U's loading time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick one. <laughs> I, you know, I, I have fun when I'm playing it, talking okay. to people, um, actually engaged in combat. But like, if I'm not in combat, that game is horrible. Like, it, there's nothing. It's very mediocre in that regard. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that they put came out with this. And a lot of uh, uh, Destiny apologists are saying, well, back last gen, Assassin's Creed had a rough start, and Gears of War had a rough start, and you know they ended up showing promise. But I don't know, like I don't want that to be the benchmark for mediocre or, or bad games. You know, like kind of like Watch Dogs fell under the same pattern of like. Oh, this isn't really great. I guess it shows promise, but all the trappings around it fail. So, well, you know, this is uh, the, the game Destiny came out. What, maybe two months ago now? Uh, no, just less than a month. So it's it's been that long, uh, or a month, month of the day. Month, okay. Yeah. So I'm looking here at the global top sellers as of uh, last week, and uh, we see FIFA 15. Uh, for all four well, global global I mean ch- check this out I'm going it dominates I'm, it, it, it dominates right yeah. so four first four spots PS4 PS3 <laughs> Xbox 360 Xbox One then fifth and sixth followed by Destiny uh, for PS4 and Xbox One so that, that's pretty good for a game to still be in the top sellers and, and that's what, exactly what it is I mean the, the point that I guess that I was going with this is this is the game that actually somebody made a big deal and it actually looked like a big deal when you went to the stores. There was a lot of advertisement. There was So definitely this is one that the company itself believed a lot into it because we all heard about it. Even though I did not buy it or anything. This Live is one action that TV ads. Yeah. I would say they spend more marketing than making the game, which is not... The game looks beautiful. I know okay. I said everything else is bad, but like it does look good. Um, and that's not a knock against the game, but you're right. Like they, this, this did have a, have a huge marketing push. Um, I'm surprised Activision didn't reach out to us to do a Destiny sponsored ad because I just right. felt I felt like I saw ads for this everywhere I went. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets a sequel. It sold 
decently. I think uh, after like first or second week, it said five hundred thousand copies shipped to stores, which that just means sold. It doesn't mean sold through to customers. True, but but I mean, you have to hope that those stores have some inclination of what they're going to end up selling. Like right. they won't all end up in a bargain bin. Well, maybe this is what we'll see on Black Friday as the big push on bundles. Oh, I mean, I I fully uh, expect that any game that comes out before November fourteenth is going to be thirty dollars somewhere on Black Friday. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we'll cover that. So keep <laughs> listening, guys. We'll have the deals for you. Smash Brothers won't be thirty dollars. No. Ten dollars. Three DS movie. Moving on to movie news um, in our weekly installment of Drew Loves Interstellar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want me to? Continue? <laughs> what have been saying about Interstellar this week? Well, the um, big news out of. Christopher Nolan's Interstellar is that Paramount released the announced they were the running time for the film, and it is Christopher Nolan's longest film to date, longer than The Dark Knight Rises by a few minutes. <laughs> it's two hours and forty nine minutes, so we're we're getting close to three hours there, and that excites me. I, like, <laughs> I really love three hour movies. So. You really have to have a solid story. Uh, to make it all the way to release and still be three hours. A lot of directors, Scorsese, a lot of these guys, they show up with this cut of the film that's super long. Mm -hmm. And then people sit through it and they're like, hey, buddy, you got to cut a couple minutes. Um, and they end up cutting back and that, you know, they always try to make it close to that two hour, a long movie. Like, a, I mean, what was the last Scorsese movie? Uh, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street. Street. Wolf of Wall Street. That was what, I mean, that two was and a half? It was about 245, 240. It was that long? But I, I mean, it was but I heard, three before he cut it. And exactly, that's exactly what I read, that he cut like a bunch of stuff out. He cut out like 10,000 usages of the word <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it, it's interesting. Nolan's taking that approach that he's got that much of a story to tell uh, that I'm really going to use every minute that I can get on this. Uh, maybe what we'll see in this movie is, and just some previews and everything... It looks like it's going to be one of these movies that it's not only trying to achieve the good storytelling, but also also the visual storytelling. It's going to have a lot of things to look at, and it really wants to exploit the fact that it's on full digital IMAX. I guess is that the correct one? Or take digital out of there? <laughs> IMAX? <laughs> no, it's. I mean, so we'll tell it. Partial IMAX uh, scene. Partial. So, super gigantic <laughs> screen IMAX. <laughs> Only one person in this room IMAX. is a level four projection specialist. <laughs> <That's right>. So <laughs> I don't Projector know why you're operator. looking around. Projector operator. <laughs> operator. <laughs> so it, it's interesting. Uh, so, so I think that's what he, he's going to do. We're going to sit there in the movie theater, I think, for ten minutes looking at a spaceship just float around. I agree with you. I I agree with you completely. I think that this movie is going to be long because it's going to have a lot of long, drug out, beautifully shot, slow moments. This is not going to be a fast story or action. I think it's going to have a. I think you are going to watch, you know, the crew of the Interstellar look at pictures of their family for five minutes and be sad, and you're <laughs> supposed to hit, get that emotional sting in your heart at the same time. Um, I think, that, like you kind of mentioned, that this was a long movie because it had a good story. I hope it has a good story. I think Nolan, you know, has told great stories, but I think this movie has a long runtime because it has Christopher Nolan's name attached to it. If a baby director made the same movie, the studio would have forced him to cut it down. I agree because they couldn't make as good of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I agree. I, they I couldn't think... speak after they watched the screening. <laughs> right. So after you know, like let's say Nolan after Memento, there's no way he could have pulled this. Uh, so I think it's just because of the track that he's had. I mean, since that movie, he's had, you know, pretty much blockbuster movies. Every single one that he's made. Prestige. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that was his shortest, I think, that uh, excluding his independent films. Really? That movie felt long. Yeah. It was long. <laughs> All of his movies are, I guess. They're uh, about two hours. Good point, though. His 
independent. But then the, the whole thing is you build a track record for this Nolan movie. I mean, that's that's ex- exactly it. I put it as, you know, I'm going to watch this Scorsese movie. I'm going to watch this new Spielberg movie. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch the new Christopher Nolan movie. He, he's he made a name for himself in his type of movies. That allows him to make a, a three-hour film. Going back to what you guys said about um, the long spaceship shots, uh, early reviews are, are saying uh, that there's a very Kubrick-esque Look, look and feel of the movie. What does that mean? It's Stanley Kubrick did a 2001 Space Odyssey, right. which is long shots of spaceships docking and all that. So, and uh, and I mean they're saying it's like Kubrick meets Spielberg, which you know, and both of them loved each other. So, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. So, and then they also released the first set of screens where they the movie is going to be shown on full IMAX format. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's on the Interstellar website you can find some theaters that are already selling tickets, uh, mostly museums and uh, ind- independent theaters, because I don't think the uh, major chains like AMC or what Legal is the rating on this are movie committing yet? You know? What's the rating on this movie? PG thirteen. PG thirteen. Okay. I don't know that it's been officially announced, but I'm sure it wouldn't be anything but. So with the whole push for film, was there any controversy? Was anybody upset? There is actually what? Yes, you baited that. <laughs> uh, so apparently, and I didn't even know this at first. When I first read, I thought it was getting an early release, just an IMAX. But apparently, it's also getting an early release release in theaters that can play thirty five millimeter film. And I guess I don't know if it's actually called this or people are just referring to it as a film first initiative. And. And uh, theater chains that only have digital projectors are upset that they're going to lose out on some profit because film theaters can play it earlier. I don't agree with this initiative. Like, regardless of if it is for for love of film, like, I feel like digital is the future. That's the technology. That's where it's going to go. Um, I'm sorry, Grandpa. Like, you know, I'm going to ride my skateboard into the sunset in the future. My hoverboard into the future. Uh, so don't hold on to your old technology. And, you know, if they, if they really if they really wanted to have this in a film, don't even release it digitally. But they would lose so much money. Yeah, Paramount would never. So, But it's interesting because Paramount announced, I think at the beginning of this year, they were the first production companies to announce they were not going to be releasing film at all. With exception of Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. <laughs> so, I thought that was pretty interesting. Power of Nolan. Again, I mean... Yeah, I mean, and it makes sense for him to push for for the IMAX film. I'm not so sure why 35mm... I, mean, I know 35mm is, is better still at this point. Um, they're close, and most people wouldn't be able to tell. But... So few theaters, as far as I know, still have 35 millimeter projectors, which is kind of strange that they would release it there. You have to be a level two projection operator to use one of those. So, <laughs> <laughs> operated for years without being level one. <laughs> don't tell the corporate office that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen. So, Fox announced that Deadpool will be part of the X Men cinematic universe. Yep, that's what we expected. Cool. And also. <laughs> Um, I mean, like sometimes, like stuff like this comes up. And I'm like, is this really a news story? Like, did, right. he, did anybody think that he wouldn't be? But I mean, he got a lot of traction. People picked up on it. I guess He's it's already just, been in the X Men universe. You know? I guess because people just love that character and they just want any glimmer of hope. Uh, but I sent a list to you guys early uh, movies that I don't think will ever come out until I actually see them in theaters. I want to add Deadpool to that list, like movies that <laughs> I. Don't Do you have that handy? Uh, off the top of my head, it was Deadpool Now, okay. Goonies 2, Bill and Ted 3, Ghostbusters 3, Warcraft, <laughs> um, Groundhog's Day 2. How about Fantastic Four? Can't <laughs> believe there's been no images of that movie. Yeah. When's it supposed to come out? Next summer? year, yeah. Yeah, next, next summer. summer. Well, the, you I think know. they've wrapped photography, or they're at least already shooting. We know that much. Oh, Blade Runner two, yeah, Indiana Jones five, and Back to the Future Star Wars reboot. Back to the Future reboot. 
I don't know why I put Star Wars. So why did right. you ask him to do that, Guillermo? And <laughs> and Ghostbusters three, which you did mention, <laughs> and oddly enough, big news today out of Twitter uh, came out. Paul Fade, mm-hmm. I guess, is the uh, big mastermind behind uh, the, the, the comedies, uh, female-led comedies uh, lately, including Bridesmaids and The Heat. Um, he officially came out and says, "Yes, I am indeed writing." The next uh, Ghostbusters movie with, uh, I don't have the lady's name, but she also wrote uh, The Heat. Uh, so, and then he's saying, and I'm bringing an all female or a female group, le- a female led cast or whatever uh, to the story. So it's official. It's been rumored for a while. Uh, there's been already, like, you know, what poor people think it's going to be in it, which, I mean, it, it, I, I think we. we it can be pretty sure that we're going to have a Melissa McCarthy in there. Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig. And I think we might get surprised with somebody like a big name that you wouldn't think it's comedy. And Amber Heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will throw somebody... Uh... Anne Hathaway. You're right. I, th- I think once he's done writing this movie, they will make it just like they make every movie that ever gets written. Just like <laughs> Kevin Smith's Superman got made. Um... Yeah, but this is too big, popular. man. This, this is going to happen. I, I think the fact that he is writing it... Uh, well, what's interesting... It's his project. He's going to make it see, He's gonna make it happen. The main thing you want to look at or notice is that he didn't say Ghostbusters 3. Or he didn't tweet Ghostbusters 3. He just said Ghostbusters. So there's speculation of the possible reboot. It has to be a reboot, but... I mean, the... It doesn't eight, matter. The I mean, set, you know, the, the, the earlier... Mo- the first two movies have to be kosher. Like, they have to maybe... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, maybe what they do is they... Go dig up the old firehouse. Uh, and it's like, hey, what the heck is this? And then they start discovering maybe... May- maybe... Maybe he'll hear me out of this. Oh, man. I'm getting you good think at this. Uh, go... Maybe they'll find a trap. Ghost trap, and then the ghost trap pops up, and it's holographic. I don't know. Bill Murray, possibly. <laughs> Bill Murray, is like Obi Wan Kenobi, or Dan Aykroyd, or or a possible Dan Aykroyd I character. Melissa McCarthy, and then he tells them like, "Here's what we used to do. Here's how it works. I mean, Go visit this guy. He'll tell you more about it." Uh, so I think that that could be pretty cool uh, to 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 be. This movie's not happening. I don't believe that this will exist. I don't think that it, that will ever see this will ever see the light of day. Uh, I believe this guy's writing a script. I believe that he has the best intentions, and I think that. Um, and I'm fine with it in all female Ghostbusters. I'm sure it'll be just as bad as the first Ghostbusters. Ouch! Which the only reason I say that is because I saw it when it came out in theaters. That movie does not hold up. Uh, I'm sure it was great as an age movie. It was great as a kid, but that movie borderline has no plot whatsoever. It is just a random series of events. And even with my untrained eye, there are so many, like, random editing mistakes and, like, nuances and weirdness and, like, hey, guys, I'm going to go out at night. Mm-hmm. Like, two weeks later, hey, I'm back. And just, like, I don't know, all sorts of shenanigans. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, it, it, it's great. Uh, another movie that you had mentioned in there, which is rumor, and we don't talk about rumors, but this is a rumor that I like to talk about. <laughs> Indiana Jones. I think Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. uh, we're getting ready here. Uh, I'm thinking, and I'm calling it right now, by the next Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con in July, there's going to be the re- or the big, uh, the big news that are going to break there, Indiana Jones. What Indiana Jones. D3 or whatever. Mighty. No, D23? D23. I don't think they're going to do that at D23. D23 is going to have like, here's more pirates, here's more Frozen, here's more... Rides and D23 is going to release. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. Uh, D23, we're going to hear details about the expansion of Hollywood Studios, which is going to include completely doing away with the Indiana Jones, uh, the, the Epic Stone but Spectacular. Don't worry, we're making a fifth film. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> They're going to create enough buzz and nostalgia out of that <laughs> and saying we're going to expand this towards our young boy audiences. Uh, you know they have fantasy land they have the new fantasy land for the girls now we're gonna make this new super world for dudes it's gonna be star wars based it's gonna be uh marble based and i think they leave some room 
for hopefully um, reviving a uh, Indiana Jones ride or Indiana Jones show. And the way they're going <laughs> to do it, bring back a re- and it's not even going to be a reboot. Some people have been speculating that the only way that they got a contract with Harrison Ford to bring him along for Star Wars was hooking him along with a, a couple more Indiana Jones movies. And many times, publicly, uh, Harrison Ford has said, yeah, I'm definitely, I mean, that's a character I love playing, and I would be up for, you know, putting the fedora back on. So, I don't, I know we don't speak on speculation, but many times we've been right about calling the future. All right, all right <laughs> listeners, when, when it's 2017, and you're listening to this because you want to check out the Nerdy XP Roots, that's just right. send me an email <laughs> and tell me that all those movies were made. <laughs> and they all came out, and they were all great and amazing, <laughs> and that Guillermo was completely right, and that D- Disney World is not what it is today. That's right. That's right. I'm calling it. You heard it here. <laughs> Goonies 2 with a CG... whatever that... Truffle Shuffle? Kid <laughs> who died. I can't remember. Um, Ooh, who was it? The lost Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. He was in. I don't know if he died. Corey Feldman died. I don't think Corey Feldman died. The other Corey. The other Corey. Corey Haim. Who was he? There's two two big yeah, Corys the, from the eighties. Right. Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. Is yeah, it? but the other Corey was the other in Corey the died. He wasn't. Okay. No. Whatever. Well, well maybe not. by 2017, Corey Feldman will die. Sorry. Corey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's like the big happy things. <laughs> Tell me about something happy, Chris. Trailers. Inside Out. Yes. Uh, so. If you haven't seen the trailer, I'm, I'm going to set the stage for you. Pixar reminds you that they make great movies. They don't show any clips from Cars 2. <laughs> <laughs> Cars 1. Yeah. Even. And then they show about 15-20 seconds of their new movie, which, I don't know if you remember the sitcom, looks just like uh, Sherman's Head, where he has multiple personalities that live in his head that uh, dictate how his emotions go. Never heard of it. If anything that I got out of this trailer is not only Pixar makes great movies, but they have great characters. And I think that's what I got out of the whole entire trailer is here's our best characters. Boom, boom, boom. And then here's your new cool characters, which I think are really cool the way they designed them. I think already Sadness is going to be a huge hit. (laughs) I mean, a huge hit. Kids love sadness. Kids are going to love sadness. That's exactly it. I think that uh, Disney already knows that they got a hit with sadness. They gave her a little spot, you know, at the end of the trailer. So, uh, this is a teaser. This is a movie that's coming out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew? Summer of 2015. Summer of 2015. So, so, we still got a little bit more to see. What I happened think- to the dinosaur? Did it get scrapped? No, that's 2016. But I feel like I've heard more about that than this. I know, like it's weird. weird. What's I've, a dinosaur? The, the, good, the good, good Dinosaur. dinosaur. The Good Dinosaur. From Pixar. Because right. I think... I know Pixar has two movies slated for 2015. And I believe it's Inside Out and Finding Dory. And then in 2016 is The Good Dinosaur. Okay. But it could be Good Dinosaur is 2015, 2015 and maybe Finding Dory is 2016. I think that's my... But I remember... Right regardless. Like, looking at a list of all the... Already out there properties set for 2015, and Finding Dory was one of them. What do you think of that? Could have changed. That could have changed. What do you think of Inside Out? I'm excited. Um, Not really much to go by. Um, They really pulled at your heartstrings by showing the uh, we know how to create the adventure book from Up. Yeah, we know how to create sadness. I was like, ah. I don't right. want to cry again. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. And that's why I think just they just I'm wondering if, well. I'm wondering if maybe the little girl is going to be like bipolar or something. If she's going to have extreme emotions. Or if she's, you know, if she's just a growing child. You know, who, I don't know. I feel like tantrums and stuff. Only one emotion is in control at all times. And you can tell in the, in the preview that they're in the process of moving. Either moving in or moving out. They're sitting at like a card table with boxes all behind them. So Man, she's you really look into this. <laughs> she's obviously not happy about Did it. Did you read the synopsis? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> honestly. I mean, I didn't pick it up until I watched it a second time with you guys. But So this was just the second time just you watching mm-hmm. it? She yeah. looked catatonic to me. Yeah, she wasn't but happy about it. She was move. sad. <laughs> leave, leave her friends. But she's got more friends up here. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, Pixar movies are, are typically great, uh, brave aside. 
So I hope that this well, one you throw follows. Grave aside and not cars. <laughs> I already threw cars too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, I hope that this one follows suit. Uh, DC Animated released a trailer for Justice League: Throne of Atlantis. Kay. I have no idea what DC is doing at this point. Like, I used to like their animated movies, but like, at once they did Justice League War and this, I mean, this looks like crap. Um, the, the Bruce Tim era of Justice League Unlimited, Batman Beyond, Batman Animated Series is gone. DC just feels like they are floundering, and I feel like all the heap of grief and piles that uh, Guillermo gives and about uh, <laughs> Dawn, Dawn of Justice, like, feels like I see it in this movie, like in this animated trailer. Yeah. I agree with you. I mean, so first they, they, they decided to completely change, really, their animation. These movies have been around for a little bit with, I guess there's been a comic book, kind of manga, uh, animation, comic book already out there. This is the first time I'm seeing it in actual film, like feature film. Uh, Interesting choice, one. Uh, Two, what's what's up with the story? I mean, you guys called it out, like, this, you know, Drew calls it out. This is the dispute of two brothers, one that kind of looks like Loki, uh, there's a you know a father figure or mother figure in this case. Uh, it's a blonde dude and a brunette guy and again a guy with black hair. Way too many similarities. Mystical, <laughs> mystical city that begins with the letter A. That's right, right. mythical city. Yeah. Mythical. And uh, wow, I mean, it, it, it really is. It, and, and then again, the costumes. Golly, what do they do to freaking uh, Wonder Woman? She looks like she's in a bathing suit. I mean, that's kind of what Wonder Woman's costume looks like in the comics. Like, I know they changed what, the coloring. The coloring, right? That's what I'm saying. It looks weird with the coloring. But, I mean, that's it's like... purple. Like, yeah, I mean, that's still originally what they were going to do. But, I mean, they, they switched it back to the old star butt. Um, you wanted color. You complained about Zack Snyder's brown Wonder Woman. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got color, color here. All right. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> brown outfit, not brown skin. <laughs> 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 oh man again I don't know who's calling the shots at DC it seems that it's they're, I don't know if they're even after making money anymore this movie looks cheap it looks like something that should have been made like in the early 90s I've only know. ever seen an animated film from the early 90s and that's the Phantasm yeah which is amazing it's yes. a great movie right uh, pre Batman Begins, I used to say that was my favorite Batman movie. I was like, this, like this is better than all the live action Batman movies. I will not say that about Justice League: Throne in Atlantis. Although One it might be better than Man of Steel. Did we get a release on this? On this, uh... the, the trailer didn't see. It's coming out this year, I imagine, based okay. off the publicity that it's pushing out. Yeah, the animated ones usually come out pretty quick after they're advertised. Good enough for them. Wow. Speaking of animated, what you got? Star Wars Rebels premiered oh. their first episode. That sort of. So, it's like on. A, it aired online. Made for TV movie. Yeah, that's so the <laughs> first episode of Star Wars Rebels. It's a. Uh, it was an hour long event. Each episode uh, going forward, it's only going to be thirty minutes or so thirty minute block. This was an hour block. The whole entire thing had a running time of about forty five minutes, uh, forty four and change. Um, it uh, premiered as a big event movie. They've been airing it randomly, but the, ori- the, the series kicks off October 13th. That's when we're going to get episode two. And then it's just going to keep going. That the one, oh, man, the episode one coming two was up. the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the one coming up, they're referring to as episode one. Yes. So this, right. this isn't uh, an okay. episode. But they're calling this the movie event. It's the beginning of the series. It works the title The Spark of the Rebellion. So, without spoilers, and then we'll, well get spoilers later, right. like, like, what do you guys think? Uh, I, I think, I, I like it a lot. Um, again, it doesn't, uh, we've been building up how, how, you know, after Star Wars weekends, how hyped I was with this, and uh, how I really could not wait to see more and hear more. I, I think, you know, Star Wars weekends was back in May, I just kind of had a hype, and I wish, you know, we would have gotten that back in June, July, so it just kind of died, and then this movie, you know, this premiered, 
I, I couldn't watch the premiere when it actually did happen. So we just got around to watching it today, a week after it had premiered, uh, basically. Um, I love it. I love it. I, I think uh, it, it's definitely targeted towards uh, kids. Uh, a lot of the scenes and a, a lot of the sequences are way too simple. Like The dialogue. The dialogue is very simple. The animation... I mean, this, this is one series that apparently they've been spending tons and tons of time on animation. Animation looks very primitive. Agreed. Uh, uh, so, uh, especially anybody who's not the main cast. Okay. Like, they walk almost like a claymation. It's weird. Like, if you put a main cast character next to an extra, like, that extra looks worse. Right. Uh, so, but you know, I give that, and then some scenes look really visually impressive. Every scene, I think, for me, that had a stormtrooper, and especially inside the uh, the uh, star destroyer, the star destroyer, I thought that looked really cool. Uh, it kind of reminisced of the beginning of New Hope. Uh, some scenes, so that was pretty cool for me. Uh, I like the characters. Uh, I think I definitely, I, 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 I you know, I. I We've only seen one episode. I can only remember one character's name, <laughs> which is oh, sometimes not good about Star Wars that they do they don't you know name their guys Joe or okay. Bill. So between the group of us, can we figure out all the characters' names? You have the cowboy Jedi, Caden. Caden, okay. Ezra, and then we have the uh, street rat Ezra. Aladdin. <laughs> we have the droid Chopper. Gotcha. We have the uh, Mandalorian Sabine. Sabine. That's oh, wow. the only other one I remember. So, uh, we have the Wookiee knockoff. <laughs> um, I remember his middle name was like and then we Ophelius have the, and then, or something. And then we have the like, uh, Twilight. Twilight? Yeah, the Twilight pilot. Um, so Gamer, Gamer's High, Cloud Nine. Cloud City Nine. The two aliens. On the, on we, can't guy. we can't remember the two aliens' <laughs> names. We How remember all the humans. Seb, <laughs> Seb, Seb was the Wookiee look like. Seb? And Sabine was... Uh, uh, Sabine was the Mandalorian. She's the Mandalorian. She's the Mandalorian. And Hera. Really? Was Hera. the... Uh, That's a name we actually heard before. <laughs> I don't know. All of them pretty, pretty... Uh... So what do you got first year? Uh, overall, I, I, I think I liked it. There's a lot of... Maybe too much rehashing of Star Wars scenes, like sets, and... Even some dialogue. I think they were excessive on that. Um, I could care less about the animation being primitive. I don't. It doesn't bother me any. Um, the dialogue, like I interrupted Guillermo with earlier, that's part of the childishness of it. That was my main problem. But I could see myself continuing to watch it. Only because it's canon and there's rumors of characters <laughs> showing up in, in the future. So... And... I mean, they got me there, I guess. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I, I think that it, um, if I was younger, I would definitely enjoy it more. I think that uh, it falls on archetype characters. Um, big burly guy, like, you know, street rat, oh, hero, reluctant, um, bad guy. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, I think that despite its cheesy laugh-out-loud dialogue, um, shows are always rougher in their pilot, mm-hmm. so I think that you know once they get the premise out of the way, um, it'd be interest. I'd be I wouldn't be upset to watch more episodes, uh, but I wouldn't. It's not must see TV, um, but if it was something that like came on or Netflix or you know I, I might give it a shot. Uh, I think it's better than Clone Wars. I know a lot of people. From what I've seen, yeah. I didn't watch all of Clone Wars, but I really wanted to watch Clone Wars because so everybody, everybody said it was so good. I watched like six episodes of the first season. And I was like, "This is not getting any better." The, the um, premiere is seconds. better. That's I, for sure. For I, sure. With with the rebels, the premiere is definitely better than the. I, premiere it looks of Clone the animation Wars. On, on Clone Wars looks a little bit higher class than this. Though. I agree, uh, but but I enjoyed the premiere of Rebels more than I enjoyed the premiere yes, of Clone Wars. I think that, that that's uh, that's a fair statement. I think I think across the board. I think although you, I don't remember the movie, the Clone Wars movie, I don't remember it. Well, that's the same way it premiered. That. Yeah. That's the way it's yeah. the same way it premiered. I mean, but that was actual like feature length theatrical release movie, so it's a little different. But because I know when they premiered, I remember when they premiered Clone Wars on TV. They aired the first two episodes, so it was like an hour. And I went to your house, Guillermo, and yeah. watched it. I remember, and 
I stopped, I never watched any further than that. Yeah. Those first two episodes, I'm like, this sucks. This yeah. Is. Like, uh, like the video game Knights of the Old Republic, that did really well because it exists in the Star Wars universe with mm-hmm. a unique cast of characters. So once you get out of Lucas's children and get your own people, like you can tell maybe a slightly better story. So I think maybe Clone Wars was kind of burdened with Yoda and Obi-Wan and Anakin. And here you do have the, you know, even if these are characters you immediately know within five minutes, um, they still are unique and different. And like, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll surprise you. They won't. But maybe they will. Um, so. Uh, all right. Well, I guess so, going into spoilers. Well, and something I wanted to add, another, a news, uh, news article that I just ran into uh, the the big premiere for this is going to be October 26th. Uh, this episode that we just watched, the 44 minute runtime episode, is going to premiere on the ABC. So it's going to be on prime time on a Sunday, eight o'clock, and they're going to premiere the episode. The catch is they're adding an extra sequence, and rumor has it, Lord, uh, Darth Vader makes an appearance already on this. So. That's pretty big. It gives me an excuse to rewatch this episode. Um, Nick Fury showed up on the second episode of Agents of Shield. Didn't make a good show. Like, well, it just true. Went, uh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, Sam Jackson on primetime television. But that that's that's pretty cool. That they, I mean, they're already kind of giving more into it. And, and part of the reason why I think Star Wars Rebels is gonna work and it's gonna continue on, it's because it's only gonna get us more hyped about what's to come and you know part of the reason I think uh, Clone Wars didn't have as much success is because we kind of knew it was going to end now we're here it's like we know it's not going to just end it's just going to if I watch the uh, Star Wars Rebels I'm going to know that much more coming into uh, episode 7 it's funny though because like Star Wars Rebels is um, before the Battle of Yemen before Mm -hmm. New Hope like you know, they're trying to make all these ties to just connect connect to episode seven, which is what twenty years after Return of Jedi. So are they going to like have these characters exist twenty five plus years and still be relevant, or you know, are, not impossible? Do you think um, Luke's going to run into Freddie Prince Jr. in a bar <laughs> and he's going to be like, "Hey, man, how's it going? Thanks for rebuilding the order." <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty interesting. I'm interested to see if that does come to fruition. Any of the characters, for some reason, I got a vibe the the villain in this in this premiere was was going to be the one, if anyone, to to carry over. I don't know why, but I just did. I don't know why, but this bothers me immediately. That they say that it's canon, but then um, uh, you know there's a Jedi in it, and then the villain, the Inquisitor, has a lightsaber on his back. It's maybe, like, maybe. That circle thing? It, it, it was glowing, or your lightsaber wouldn't glow before it's activated. Oh, he's We're getting dead. into spoilers, <laughs> aren't we? But, I mean, yeah. They, There's yeah. pictures released. He's holding a lightsaber. That's, that's malarkey. <laughs> there, there's only two, and a, a master and apprentice. Who the hell is this third bastard? Where does he get off using lightsabers well, and the force? And there always is... The, I mean, there was always the whole so deal. So you have lied. <laughs> I guess. Well, maybe... Maybe Vader was not the Emperor's Apprentice. He'd already, he'd already passed it. He was <laughs> He's training this Inquisitor guy. Maybe. Somebody's gonna kill the fuck out of him, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I guess spoiler fill, or let's talk about some spoilers now. Uh, a highlight for me was the vehicle. Very reminiscent of uh, Millennium Falcon. That was one of my complaints. It was a little bit too much, especially the cockpit was too and, much. I mean, if you think about it, it's like cars in our room, you know, there's different models. Yeah. You know, that would be similar on the inside. And, you know, this, this is a smaller economy version of the Falcon. <laughs> and the, uh, the chessboard? The chessboard. I think uh, that's when, because maybe I was okay man, with the Man, I need cockpit. to watch this episode. <laughs> So much. So maybe I was okay with the cockpit until the chessboard showed. Yeah, and I was like, okay, this is. <laughs> and they have the, service. the guns on the top and the bottom. Yeah. Oh, ship, and I guess I guess this in the spoilers for a second. Ship combat looks terrible to me. 
Like, character models, okay, you know, they shoot, they swing lightsabers. But those ships flying, they look stiff. They look like you could almost see the kid holding the strings, <laughs> like, moving them around. Which may be on purpose, trying to reference the, the use of models in the original I, I think they did. I mean, you look at the explosions. I don't think when it exploded, it def- they definitely made it's The TIE fighter exploded, it definitely looked like right. a model falling to pieces. They're trying anything. to catch it, man. They're trying to catch it. And, I mean, they've, they've said in, in interviews and stuff that they're trying to capture the feel of the original trilogy in this. All right. So, so I mean, same with episode seven and all. Maybe is that's that, what we're is doing. Okay? The graphics. Uh, maybe. I mean, like, is it okay to gimp? I mean, people your... complain when you know, about the prequels, and, and I'm with them. You know how much better they are in, yeah. in the aspect of fighting, and, and it doesn't make any sense that it would regress. You know. Sure. So. Okay. I mean, it's it's okay. It's for a second. Also, you know, going back to this thought about the vehicle, this is the first time we went. Through, we get to see Kessel. We always hear about the Kessel Run, and how the Millennium Falcon is, you know, did the, uh, did the Kessel Run in 35, 12, 12, 12 parsecs, parsecs. Mm-hmm. 12 parsecs, uh, whatever that means. I was hoping, I was hoping that it, there was going to be some kind of, uh, uh, like Ghost would do the Kessel Run? Yeah, I was, I was hoping that it would just go through this Kessel Run, and it's like, oh man, we just did it in 13 seconds, <laughs> no one's ever going to do that, I thought that they just let this, itself for it. Maybe that's going to be a deleted scene. Maybe, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll give us that fan service. Uh, so it, it, it's interesting. Uh, they didn't need any more references to A New Hope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think at some point they did mention. They uh, literally say A New Hope, and I right. laughed. <laughs> I couldn't I laugh. I remember so it was ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and it's a trap. <laughs> that's not from A New Hope. But, yeah, they didn't say it's, it's a trap, trap is they it? They did. Yeah. I guess when they get got... Uh, Ezra ran into Ezra one ran. Them, it's, a trap, in a trap. it's a trap, it's a trap, it's a trap! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone say I got a bad feeling about this? They, he, no. Did but I catch it? No, that I didn't, I didn't catch. But I almost thought he did, like, in the opening. Because he, he goes, I have a... And he kind of looks, but that's it. That so was I, almost comical, too, like... Every time they meet, they went like, do 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 They, like, looked over their shoulder, and I was like, it's kind of like a parody... Like they're hearing the music, man. If I was a kid and this is, you know, I, I saw the, the Star Wars, you know, and I kind of got introduced to this. I'm super excited about this uh, new I characters agree. that you're gonna get to grow and play with. Uh, this looks pretty solid uh, from a storytelling point. I think they did a very good job of introducing a group of new characters. Definitely makes you excited, or made me excited to find out more. Like, where the heck did this uh, Jedi's come from? I mean, that that's really it for me. I th- I don't know. Uh, I think it's I think it's fine. Um, Will you be watching the next episode? The I'm first over, episode. If I'm over here and you guys are watching it, yes, but I will not. You will not in, go out of your way. To I will watch not it. independently watch it. Now. Okay. I don't think I have Disney XD. <laughs> so it's <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> we would make sure. I could be wrong. I don't know. I, one of the Disney channels, maybe. But yeah, I might have to wait for Netflix. Maybe it's just me being like really nitpicky. Man, is it being just too cool for school? Like, <laughs> oh man, I'm a female Mandalorian who spray paints and uses demolition yeah. and like and not that's gonna be about a, everything. That's gonna be a really hair graffiti and, armor she wears. Yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> like, really interesting uh, to see her backstory. Like, she was the most colorful character like you know mm-hmm. um every like you said in Griffey Army every other character uh even the heroes did have kind of like drab and just like I wear brown and yellow yeah. um but she was like all crazy decked out she even had pink hair and pink streaks in her hair she but. probably spray painted she's probably gonna blow <laughs> up her hair at some point <laughs> fair enough yeah. I like I remember in one of our earlier uh podcasts when we reviewed the 10 minute clip or whatever they showed which is basically the opening of this um movie episode the um we complained or I did at least that the speeder chase was really slow and I I feel like they sped it up cause it didn't feel slow at all to me when watching it again this time it felt shorter like yeah, the whole first shorter. 10 minutes definitely I, felt shorter I thought the same thing like I don't know if it's because we already saw it and like ready yeah. like, but I was like did they literally speed that up I want to say it side by side because I remember complaining like this is so slow 
You could I, run faster than that. Right. <laughs> and then it just felt like it dragged out. Mm-hmm. Uh, music wasn't really like motivating. It seems that the mo- mo- the the music now definitely helped it. Did they beta? Beta the footage? Like, to get to well, the, the article that I was also reading about this uh, adding the Darth Vader scene, apparently there was an article on StarWars.com about how George Lucas got to see the first episode and then the week after they this released... This something later. Right? Yes. <laughs> and the week after they released, we're going to add a new scene uh, premiering for, uh, you know, for the majority of the world. Uh, he waved his hand. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, any other thoughts? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> one last question, I guess, I want to put out to the group is: Do you hope to see any one of these one main character or these main characters in Episode Seven? Yep. Yes or no? No. Drew, I'm welcome to the idea, but so far there's none that I would say I want. I want them to stand on their own. I want Episode Seven to tell its story without any like mandate for an easter egg or not or an acknowledgement of this show and i want this show to just be able to to create the characters that it wants and not have to be beholden to some predestined future that this character has to be available to be in this scene later i think i mean i think it's more likely that it would be someone minor if someone does cross over and someone on the imperial side makes sense because they're a little bit more organized i guess not from what I saw. <laughs> oh, that was another thing. And Guillermo said this. Everything was too... I know it's a kid's show. But everything was too easy. I remember thinking that. And I was like, God. Like, they, they just get to do whatever they want. Yeah, they just oh, went inside of the destroyer and walked <laughs> out. <laughs> like, without any repercussions or problems or, like... Like, they did this whole rescue mission where they didn't have to because the kid just was at the door waiting for them. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that was... Yeah. We shall see more. Uh, I'm definitely excited for the next episode. I'm not disappointed at all. So, Well, love to hear what you guys think. You can email us at nerdexp at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts on Star Wars Rebels, what movies will never come out, what's going to happen to theme parks. Uh, if you want to hear more from us... Don't tell me any rumors about episode 7. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear more from us, you can follow me on Twitter at nerdexp. You can tell Drew... Episode 7 spoilers <laughs> at The World is Squared Backwards. If you can spell it. <laughs> and you can also check Drew out on his new podcast. True. Drew. Which is it's called... funny that you say that because... Did it get canceled already? <laughs> no, no, it's not been canceled. It's beta. The, it's name, beta the name has changed twice already, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know so if we've quite decided on a name yet. Nothing's <laughs> on the internet yet, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know in the future. <laughs> Sounds good. Teasers. <laughs> Rumor, <laughs> rumors and speculation. We are not <laughs> commenting on this I'm podcast. About this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Guillermo. And thank you for listening. I hope this helped you guys with your nerd IQ. Level up, friends. I'm recording, so whenever you're ready, go ahead. What's going on, Internet? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when it uh, builds up for a month. Go look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to use that. <laughs> oh, wow. We're going to use it. I'm oh. totally gonna use it. <laughs> it's th- it's thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I held my drink back because I'm like my computer. I think I like spit a little bit. I bought it in the air. Oh. All right, you have to put this at the end. Ah. Cut it out and put it at the end. Whew. <laughs> 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 Ready? Yeah, I'm ready for it.